Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at another import laptop from GearBest. This is the TechLast F6 Pro. This costs about 500 bucks. It's a two-in-one, so you can put it into display mode. You can run it in tent mode if you wish, and you can also uh, flip it back down here into tablet mode, so it works a lot like some of the other devices that we've looked at. Uh, this one, though, is powered by a Core M3 processor, so it might be a little faster than uh, some of the other laptops we've looked at from GearBest in this uh, particular class of computer. Uh, this does cost, though, about $500, so it will cost a little more than some of the less expensive devices out there, but again, you'll probably see a little more performance out of it. And before we get into the review, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came to the channel free of charge from GearBest.com. However, nobody is paying for this review. No one is reviewing what you're about to see before it is uploaded, and all the opinions are my own. So let's get a closer look now at the hardware. This has a 13.3 inch touch display. It is an IPS display. It's not as bright as I would like it to be, but uh, it looks to be pretty decent from an image quality standpoint. Uh, it's nice to see 1080p at 13.3 inches here. Not too much screen bleed on it, if any. So it is a pretty decent display here for what you're getting. So that was nice to see. As I mentioned, it has an Intel Core M3 7Y30 processor. This is a fanless chip that's based on the regular Intel Core architecture. So we'll talk about thermals in a little bit, but again, it'll be faster than the uh, Atom-based and uh, Apollo Lake-based machines that we've looked at recently here on the channel. Eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM is inside of it, dual channel, 128 gigabyte SSD is inside. Weighs about three pounds or 1.38 kilograms, so not all that heavy. All metal design here. It really is a pretty attractive device here to hold in the hand. Uh, what's funny about these things is that they often sometimes look nicer on the picture on the website than they do appear in person. Uh, this one actually looks as good in person as it does in its picture. So that was good to see a uh, laptop here actually look somewhat decent. Uh, there's a fingerprint reader here on the trackpad that seems to work pretty nicely. Uh, decent trackpad on here along with the keyboard. This is not a backlit keyboard though, so uh, you will be uh, feeling your way around in the dark. Not too bad on the travel front, a little shallow on the key travel, but I think decent enough for the form factor that they were aiming for on here. Let's take a look at some ports on this one. You've got a full service USB type C port here. This is not Thunderbolt, but it does do power display and data. And the uh, power adapter that it came with actually was the European adapter. So we were able to uh, plug the USB-C cable from one of our docks in here to boot it up and charge it up. So it was nice to be able to have that option there. You also have a mini HD or micro HDMI output here. So you can hook up an external display through this connector or that one. I do believe you can get two displays going out of here at the same time. So that's kind of a nice thing to see. They also managed to fit a full-size USB 3.0 port over on this side. On the other side, almost dropped it there, uh, you've got the power button, a micro SD card slot here for augmenting its onboard storage, another full-size USB 3 port. You've got a headphone jack here, and then the power adapter plugs in here. But again, if you've got a USB-C power adapter, I would just use that instead. On the bottom here, you'll notice there's a little slot. This is for swapping out its storage. You can put in an M2 SATA drive down here and add some additional storage to, oops, to the device if the 128 gigabytes isn't enough for you. So that's a, a good option to see on this one. The RAM, though, is not upgradable, so just keep that in mind. Uh, there are two speakers here on the front, and it's kind of neat, actually. It's got a very odd sound to it, not in a bad way, but a very nice stereo separation. Not the best sound quality out of it, but it was nice to hear very spatial audio coming out of this device. In fact, I was playing back one of my uh, channel trailers, and I had some audio in the background there that I don't usually hear on some of these laptop speakers. And just based on how these speakers are positioned, I was able to hear things a little differently than I normally did. And it was just kind of a nice thing when you're sitting in front of it here to get a good amount of sound kind of surrounding you, which was, again, kind of surprising on uh, one of these uh, import laptops there. So all in, not too bad of a package here, but the real test is how well it performs. So let's take a look and see what this thing can do. So let's kick things off with some video watching. We'll begin with my YouTube channel and a 1080p video running at 60 frames per second. We had no issues playing back that video, no drop frames, and everything played back as expected. Uh, this is a seventh generation Intel design. It's based on their KB Lake chips, and that uh, generation of processor really improved things insofar as hardware 
video acceleration was concerned, so we're seeing no uh, issues with video playback on here. When we get to Kodi a little later, you'll see some higher end video pushed on it. We also browsed the web with the device, and as expected, it was able to uh, do just fine with that as well. It does support wireless AC, so you'll get the fastest wireless out there at the moment if you happen to have an AC access point or router available to you. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 81, which doesn't put it too far behind a regular i3 processor that we had in a ThinkPad 13 that I reviewed a few months ago, so pretty good performance out of that one. And Microsoft Word and other Office applications should also perform nicely on here. We've got our newsletter template, as you can see, doing all the things that we usually do. And as expected, uh, the machine is able to do some desktop publishing and other productivity tasks quite efficiently. Now, we found battery life on the device to be around six to seven hours, give or take, when you're doing those productivity tasks like web browsing, email, and Microsoft Word. You might be able to squeeze a little more life out of it if you turn the screen brightness down, but generally not a uh, great battery life laptop. These Core M3 processors do consume a little bit more than some of the Apollo Lake and other uh, processors designed for more longevity, but again, you get a little more performance out of it as a result. Now, if you want to kill the battery quicker, you can load some games up on it, which is exactly what we did. And because this has the seventh generation core technology built in, we wanted to see how some of the higher end games will perform on it. So we'll start off with Grand Theft Auto V at 720p with all of the graphics settings turned down. We were able to get frame rates at around 15 to 20 frames per second, but mostly on the 15 frames per second side of that estimate. So not entirely playable, but uh, we are getting better performance out of this than we've seen on many other fanless laptops at around this price point. We also ran Rocket League at the lowest settings at 1080p, and we were seeing frame rates between 20 and 42 frames per second. So you could probably get a decent Rocket League experience going on this particular computer. We also took a look at Minecraft, and we got uh, frame rates at 1080p with the Optifine plugin installed around 45 to 142 frames per second. Quite a big range there on Minecraft, but I think what's happening with this computer is that because it doesn't have a fan, it will throttle itself as it gets too hot. They actually make the processor run slower so that it doesn't overheat and we ran a benchmark called the 3D Mark Stress Test to figure out exactly where we might fall on that thermal throttling issue. And we got a score there of 82.5%, which is a failing grade. 97% is passing, but generally, in my experience, to pass that test, you need some kind of active cooling where you've got a fan running to uh, get the heat away from the laptop. So again, as this thing heats up, it will slow down. And if you're curious, we got temperatures at about 100 degrees Celsius and 212 degrees Fahrenheit at its peak. So it did get very, very hot. And again, that will result in the computer slowing down when it's really under load with games like this. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 3,559. And that puts it uh, very close to last year's Core M5 chip. Remember, this one has the Core M3. So we're seeing a a pretty nice little bump in performance from one generation to the next and that the low-end processor now performs as well as the mid-range one did a year ago. Now, I did want to draw your attention to the physics score that we got on the Acer Aspire 1 from a few months ago. Uh, that one is running with the lower-end Apollo Lake chip, but it's performing on that particular test about as fast as the Tech Last is. And the reason is, is that uh, that Apollo Lake processor is a quad-core processor, uh, whereas the Tech Last here is running with only two cores. But you can see the dual core here is performing as well as the quad core on the lower end chips. So if you're wondering why those physics scores are so close, it's because the other one has more cores, but the two cores that this computer has are a little bit faster. And we also tested some higher end video files with Kodi on the laptop here. And we've got the Jellyfish test file running. I'll put a link to where you can find that down below. Uh, this is 140 megabits per second, 10 bit HEVC, and it ran without a hitch on here. Uh, that's because the KB Lake architecture now supports decoding that high end video in hardware. And this is able to do it just like its older siblings can do on some of the higher end i3, i5, and i7 processors. And we also tried out some alternative operating systems. Here it's running Ubuntu. We were able to get it to load up. The display worked properly. The touchscreen worked. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 
Uh, just about everything worked, including audio, except the trackpad. The trackpad here needs some additional drivers, I think, to get uh, working in Linux, and we were not able to get that part working. Uh, it did work when we plugged in an external mouse, of course, so uh, just be aware of that. And speaking of drivers and support, I always like to remind people that when you buy one of these import laptops, you're often buying at your own risk. Now, I've looked at a bunch of stuff from TechLast over the last couple of months here, and generally the quality has been good uh, with these products for my first impression review of it, but I don't know what the long-term reliability is going to be, and I also don't know what kind of support you're going to get from the company outside of Asia. Their website is mostly in Chinese. It's often hard to navigate down and find the drivers you might be looking for for your particular computer, so uh, you will be getting, I think, a pretty decent price on a Core M-powered laptop, but you might find yourself stuck with something that doesn't work work uh, with no support on the device down the road. So buyer beware. Uh, these things don't always come with great long-term support, but uh, you will get a pretty good deal for the short term. So just keep that in mind as you are thinking about uh, making the purchase because sometimes you might get stuck with something that doesn't work in the long run. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with this one, actually. It seems like it's a nicely constructed laptop here. We've got all the two-in-one functionality we've seen from uh, other more expensive brands and a pretty nicely performing device as well. And I just like the way it looks and the way it feels and the way it seems to be performing, too. So all in a nice little package here, I think, for a decent price. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Steve Blixt, Stanley Taub, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.